success. Where have you been? Getting your morning paper. Well, it's about time. I know it did take slightly longer than expected. Yes, I'd say that two and a half years is slightly longer than expected. <laughs> you still want your breakfast? Yes, I'm a bit peckish, actually. Mmm. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> What's this? A croissant. Am I expected to eat this? What's wrong? I ordered a ham roll. <laughs> the ham rolls were past their sell-by date. Good work. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> delicious. So, why the delay? What happened this time? Ah, oh, well, after the shops, I got chatting to someone. For two and a half years? Well, no, no, for two minutes. Oh. Then I wandered about my own for a minute. Mm -hmm. Then I looked in a shop window for half a minute. Right. And then there's seven seconds, which I just can't account for. <laughs> no, no. We're dealing in a period of two and a half years. Uh -huh. If you're going to recount it second by second, we're going to be here for two and a half years. Well, that's okay. We live here. <laughs> <laughs> just give me the essentials. Well, Thailand was nice. <laughs> I didn't care for Australia or Scandinavia, and the Balkan states, well, take them or leave them. So you've been travelling? Well, for the first two weeks, yes. <laughs> Where have you been? I found a pin. I'm sorry? I found a pin. Oh, well, why didn't you say so before? You found a pin. Well, in that case, you're back early. <laughs> Well, if you're going to take that attitude... Yeah, you... Don't, don't, no, no, honestly, I'm interested. <clears throat> Whose pin was it? Well, exactly my thoughts in finding it. Whose pin indeed? I pictured a little old lady, most likely recently widowed, sitting alone in her cottage in the forest without a favourite pin, so... I embarked on a nationwide search <laughs> Hill and Glen for the pin zone, which search ended this very morning when I found the lady in question. I've just come from the joyful reunion. Ironically, it belongs to... <laughs> Ironically, it belongs to old Mrs. McIver round the corner. <laughs> Considering her nickname's the Pin Lady, maybe I should have started with her. I don't know. <laughs> it's easy with hindsight, you know. Donald, you are the kindest man I have ever met. <laughs> Waste not, want not. <laughs> now, Don, my morning paper, if you will. <clears throat> Thank you. news. No, oh, that's excellent news, actually. Yes, just what the country needs. Get everyone united behind a common enemy, yes. Bit of the Churchill spirit. And my advice to you is to cook your potatoes in their jackets and grow your own onions. <laughs> oh, I love a good war, yes. Rationing, yes. genuinely amusing radio programs. Yes. <laughs> Conscription. Conscription. Conscription! Hide! <laughs> oh, this is hopeless. It's true, you know, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> Speak for yourself, George. <laughs> oh, that's true, yes, yes, yes. I can run, but I can't hide. Yes, but it's you. You can hide, but you can't run. Not strictly true, John. Eh? Ah, See? Yeah. You can run, but you can hide. No, no, no. You can run, but you can't hide your legs. <laughs> or the other way around. You can hide your legs, but you can't run. Maybe the conscription officer. Oh, no. I don't want to go to war. I'm too tall to die. I'm, I'm simply too handsome to wear camouflage. People need to see me. Don't! What are we going to do and when are you going to do it? No! I've got a foolproof plan. Foolproof? Go to... Go away! We're not in! <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> I'm too good at dancing to march. Okay, plan B. Get in the box. It'll be okay. Oh. <clears throat> Come in. Donald and George McDermott. Uh, no, no, they don't live here anymore. They've, uh, they've joined the army. That's right. So, uh, we live here now. Uh, my name's Mr. Box, and this is my charming wife, oh, Mrs. Box. <laughs> Hello there! Yes, we're just off for the weekend with, with the packages, and that uh, posh young couple, the... The egg cactus. Yes, so bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. <laughs> How long are we going to have to hide out here, Don? Well, until the war's over or until we're too old to be conscripted, whichever comes first. 
Plus, I never realized Cardboard City was as nice as this. Oh, no, no, this is Cardboard <laughs> Suburbia. <laughs> Just for an idea. Clever. Oh, yes, yes. I like it. <laughs> They'll never find us here. Well, it's a bit cramped, no? You might have to give up the dance lessons. No, oh, no. I can teach the class in the extension. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll be very happy here, yes, I like it. Yes. Oh, even better. Darts. Fancy a game? No, no, I don't like darts. It makes you fat. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Have a game. All right. Nearest the bull starts. Right. You win, on you go. Okay. <laughs> 180! <laughs> this looks pretty easy. Yeah. Damn, 26! Oh. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! That'll be the conscription officer. Oh, I'm too hairy to wear a helmet. <laughs> Good morning. I'm a member of the general public. Oh. I'm here to look round the box I'm interested in buying. Oh. No, so, sorry, can't be done. I arranged with the box's owner, Mr. Jenkins, to have a look round today. Oh, uh, he changed his mind. Yes, that's yes, right. he doesn't want to sell anymore. No, no. So, where is Mr. Jenkins? Oh, uh, he's he's working. He, he's he's not here. Yes, he's doing some repairs on the mm. extension. <laughs> well, I'll go and have a word with him then, shall I? Oh, no, no, he no. doesn't like to be disturbed. No, no. He doesn't. that's it. I'm sure he won't mind. Oh, he will. He's got a furious temper. Yes, yes, furious. I think I can cope. Thank uh, you. No, listen. I tell you what, I'll. Yes, I'll pop through, have a word with him, and report uh, straight back to you. <laughs> okay? Yes. Oh, hello there, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, hello, Georgie. <laughs> hey, I, I hope this is important, because I don't like being disturbed. Told you. Is that nice young woman's here, the, the one that wants to look around the box? Oh, that's a shocking shame, because I've completely changed my mind about that. I don't want to sell anymore, and that's definite. I'm sorry, he's changed his mind about Let this. Let me deal with this. I'll speak to him myself. Uh, she'd like to hear it from the horse's mouth. Uh, I'm too shy. <laughs> You're too shy. Sorry, he's too shy. Too shy? Yes. You're lying. He's yeah. not uh, here, is on he? On a slightly different tag. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry about the inconvenience and all, and you coming all this way, but I, I'm afraid I'm just too shy to sell the box. I'll give you 35,000 cash. Uh, <laughs> so. are going to keep us out of the army. <laughs> Don't burn, you idiot. Flat feet. Ah! Oh, God, God, God. Are you sure? Are you sure? You've got the right setting. Yes. Wool, linen, feet. Yes. Right. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's not working. Right, your turn. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I've had a much better idea. Well, it's a pity you didn't have this much better idea about ten minutes ago. Well, that's much better ideas for you. I had no idea I was going to have this much better idea ten minutes ago. And how much better is this much better idea? Plenty much better. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you're looking for recruits, sir. Take a seat. Well, we are the men for you. Where do we sign? <laughs> Oh, no! Look at our feet. They're as flat as flat can be. Yes. Suppose that rules us out. Oh, well, <laughs> never mind. Well, gentlemen, I uh, sympathise with your disability. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> These days in the forces, there are jobs for people with flat feet. For instance, a desk job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir. C could I ask you uh, not not to say the word desk? My associate <clears throat> is allergic to the word desk, and, and I'm allergic to my associate fainting. So no <laughs> problems. There are no in the parachute regiment, and those flat feet good for landing. <laughs> Ordinarily, yes, you see, but the beret at that velocity would just fly off. <laughs> 
And as for my associate, <laughs> neither of us have got the head for it, really. So, once again, sadly, we must decline. Right, and, and I suppose you would have found out in the end anyway, so I might as well tell you, but I've got a very, very terrible chesty <laughs> cough if you, <laughs> if you get on me. <laughs> and I've got a sort of a debilitating flip. Oh. oh, look, there appears to be roughly £35,000 on your desk. <laughs> desk. <Ooh>. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Preston, you honestly believe that these two squaddies, William McDermott and McDermott, are really spine material? Yes, I do, sir. There's something about them, baby, I like. <laughs> That's a status quo song, is it? <laughs> yes, sir. Not one of their best. No, no, no. <laughs> You know, I always thought that uh, whatever you want was where most these are yeah. Did you ever see them live, sir? Mm, yes, I did, you know. Yes. Hammers, Hammers with Odeon, 1975. Of course, you know, they still had Spud Coughlin and Nuff Lancaster with them then. <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, whatever happened to that band that Spud formed? What was it called? Diesel. Never heard much about it. Must have come to nothing. Mm. I expect so. Well, come on. Can't stand here all day chatting about the quote. Let's get on. Back to these uh, two, McDermott and McDermott. Do you really think they've got something? Yes, I do, sir. That's all right. We'll have them in. Come on, quickly. Privates. <laughs> Stop crying! <laughs> Straight of attention! <laughs> Major, are you absolutely sure about this? I'd like to give them a chance, sir. But they're complete novices. They're untrained. They're undisciplined. Unlikely. That's the point. The enemy will never suspect them. Trust me, sir. These two will be our greatest spies yet. Major, that is so simple. It is stupid. But I like it. I say, uh, Private, you look very uncomfortable in uniform. No, they are a bit itchy. Yeah. <laughs> How would you like to go back into civilian clothes and come here and work with me in intelligence? Intelligence? Well, naturally. <laughs> what, does, what does intelligence mean again? Stand up. Does it? All right. Come on, George. Intelligence. Intelligence. <laughs> well, congratulations, both of you. Welcome to MI5. Thank you. Now, you have been chosen partly because of your intelligence, but uh, also because very few people want to be a spy nowadays. It's post-Cold War. You see, there's very few people left to spy on. And that's where you come in. Oh, I want you. All right. right. <laughs> Yes. Yes, right. I want you to come up with a whole new agenda, a whole list of possibilities about spying. Like, who should we spy on? When should we spy on them? What should we spy on them with? Oh, well done. That's exactly what I mean. Now, here are your instructions. Now, you read them, and when you have, you destroy the information. Here are you, you, you can use these. When you cut up the paper, you put it into that basket. Now, when that is full, I want you then to put it all into there. Now, in turn, when that is full, you put everything into that. And when that is full, you leave it outside your front door and one of our agents will pick it up. Now, off you go back to your flat. Now, be careful because when you get there, the whole place will have been fitted out with all the latest spying equipment. Spying equipment? Gadgets? Yes! <laughs> I will know for sure when we're going out. <laughs> George, George! What? Look what they've given us! Yes! Eh? They look like innocent little bits of wood. Right. But these ingenious coloured tips ah. turn them into sulphur guns. Yes! <laughs> Eat flame, hellhound! <laughs> burn, pig dog, burn! Good day, Mr. D and Mr. G. By now, you will no doubt have found your sulphur guns. Use them sparingly. Average contents per box are 34. <laughs> Furthermore, if you look in your freezer... Oh, right. Hurry up, hurry up. Oh, right, oh, right. You will find a mysterious eastern lady whose icy cold heart shall be melted ere long by your charming Scottish brogues. By 
God, she must really like shoes. <laughs> right, business first, Don. As is customary, this tape will self-destruct in five seconds if you hammer it with a baseball bat. <laughs> By me, he was right. But... <laughs> he didn't say goodbye. Oh, I'm sure he must have. Goodbye. <laughs> Now, George, yeah? who are we going to spy on and why? And remember, George, it doesn't have to be... The Swiss! No, um... Yes! <laughs> right. There's so much we don't know about the Swiss! Yes. I mean, why are they so Swiss, you know? Why do they, why do they insist upon living in Switzerland? Yes. You know, why haven't they been bothered to invent their own language? I mean, they're so lazy, why do they never fight wars? I mean, why is the country so, so slippery? Yes. I mean, it's just <laughs> all the time! Okay, okay, Switzerland it is, I'll pack. Hey, didn't know, I'm not going to the dump. No, no. There's a nice Swiss restaurant up the road, I thought we could start our mission there. All right, we could open our spying off with a slap-up fondue for two. Excellent. Well, come on, what are we waiting for? For it to open, it's three in the morning. All right, then. <laughs> Swiss restaurants destroyed in the last three weeks. <laughs> Five more turned over because they happened to be next door to a Swiss restaurant. Three supermarket managers harassed for trying to sell Emmental cheese. <laughs> a diplomatic crisis. Questions in the house. What have you got to say for yourselves? Bye-bye. Pleasure doing business with you. Not so fast. How fast, then? Well, not as fast as that. Where do you think it will go? Oh, we sort of thought honourable discharge with triple merit. Yeah, just pop the mails in the post. No, 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 no. You know too much. Ah, flattery will get you nowhere. <laughs> we don't know anything. Implying that you know nothing. Well, just as the journey to the centre of a single atom is as infinite as the journey to the end of the universe, so it is with knowledge. Now, if you please. <laughs> we accept, do you see, that there is an infinite amount of knowledge. Therefore, the man that knows more than any other, perhaps, what, 10 million facts, is not but one centimetre on the journey to knowledge. Is it as if a man travelling to the moon believed that he had conquered the universe? But no, no, no. A journey of 97,000 miles <laughs> is but to stand still in the infinite vastness of space. So, you see, to know nothing is as close to knowing everything as two adjacent molecules on the nail of my little finger. Gentlemen, nothing is everything. So why are they spelled differently? <laughs> well, that's very interesting, Brig, but I'm just not interested. You still don't understand. <sighs> there is only one way to leave the service. <laughs> oh, come on. We're hardly going to kill you. <laughs> We're not going to go that far. Not me, you. Well, we're hardly going to kill ourselves just to get out of the service. <laughs> no, I'd kill it. You'd kill us? Well, not me personally, of course. I'd have someone do it. <laughs> Who? Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Just someone? No, I don't believe you. What's his name, this killer? <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Just take my word for no, it. No, 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 George is right. Who's this dark stranger that comes silently in the night to squeeze out our last breath? This also oh secretive terminator. This cold, calculating, subhuman <laughs> monster. This harbinger of doom. Come on, what's his name? This terrible angel of destruction. Philip. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you. I heard so much about you. Don, 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 what are you doing? Hey, I'm thinking. Yeah. I think you might be thinking a wee bit too hard. Oh, maybe, maybe, yes. George, how, how did we get into this mess in the first place? What did you just say? I said, how did we get into this mess in the first place? <laughs> Yeah, oh, no, sorry, I thought you'd given me an idea. <laughs> Why? Well, I've seen that happen so many times, you know. Somebody says something seemingly innocuous, then the next minute somebody suddenly has an idea. Well, maybe I could try saying other innocuous things. Well, it's, it's worth a throw. Did you know that uh, Madrid was the only capital city of Europe not situated on a waterway? That's not innocuous, that's bloody interesting. <laughs> All right, all right. There are five Scottish football league teams whose name begins and ends in the same letter. No, oh, now careful. You're getting fascinating now. <laughs> careful. Well, George, I'm sorry. I just can't think of anything innocuous. Just have an idea. Oh, of course. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. Ha have an idea. It's been staring us in the face. And the idea is... 
What have you got? Well, look, he sticks his tongue out when he's concentrating. Yeah, yeah. What have you got? He, he sticks his tongue out when he's concentrating. Well, we've got him in two counts. Three if you count the tongue thing. Right, let's take him. OK. <coughs> what do you want, telephone engineers? <laughs> oh, I got The ages McDermott. <laughs> Brigadier baby, it's over. I think perhaps it's time you find our death charge. <laughs> If you get our meaning. <laughs> My God, you two are brilliant. Do you know you're the first people in 25 years to spot that I still do that? From there, it must have been a very simple step to discover Operation Bosch. And then, of course, you realize that McNeil and Mika Lachenkov were working together in the dead zone of Berlin. <laughs> if you've got as far as the dead zone, then you must know about the general. Sort of. Remind us, though, I think. The General would lead you to the Secretary of State and the... Oh, my gosh. You know that I am the 38th man. Oh. He really took that tongue thing to heart, didn't he? Yeah. I feel a bit guilty. Maybe we shouldn't have mentioned it. <laughs> Milk? No, thanks. No. Easy, easy. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Sugar? Uh, no, thanks, Don. How many? Not two. Not two. One. Not two. Uh, there we go. Well, you know, Don, it was, all, it was all nice and simple in the end, wasn't it? Yes, it all seemed to sort of tie up very neatly, didn't it? You've got to come and get your letter. It's down the depot. You ripped me off. You pretended to be Mr. Jenkins. Why, Mr. Jenkins? And you owe me thirty-five thousand pounds. What about me? When are you going to warm my ice cold heart? There's been a great mistake. This isn't my bin. 